What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Hashtag Ashleyvelin TV. How'd the show go? Today's episode was a wild one, and we <laughs> talked a lot about bread and alternatives for it. We talked about athletic style training, looking better naked, performing better naked. Performing better naked. naked. Enjoy the show. Of <laughs> lots of good stuff. Lots of laughs. Enjoy. And once again, guys, if you're new to the show, this is the Q&A show where we take your questions on social media when you hashtag them, ask Live Lean TV, and we're going to throw a little curveball. We're going to change up the show a little bit. We're not going to take Snapchat questions anymore. Oh. So if you already have your me. Snapchat question <laughs> in... I just made this up. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. No, we did talk about this. Yeah. Um, if you already have your Snapchat question in, we will answer it eventually. But from this point forward, no more Snapchat. It's just too hard to find the questions, save them, and everything else. Um, yeah, I agree. You can't search them on Snapchat. Yeah, we disappear. we have some help with people finding the questions on social media, but they don't have access to our Snapchat. So um, it's just let's just keep it simple. Twitter, Facebook, so Instagram. So if you want your question answered, Twitter right here. Um, on Instagram and Facebook. I was like, I had my rhythm where I'm like, this one, this one, and this one, and then I was like, Snapchat's out, so, okay. <laughs> this guy could ramble on. I can ramble on. <laughs> <laughs> Little Miss Rambler over there. All right, enough of the banter. He just got done with an epic workout. I think that's why he's all giddy I'm right all now. jacked up yeah, on pre-workout. My workout was hours ago, but his just finished. All right, let's okay. get into the show. Question number one on Twitter from Chris Bravo says, how would you approach lower body training if my goal is to jump higher and improve agility for my sport? All right, I would approach it in an athletic style training manner, meaning like you would work on athletic style jumps and stuff like that. So doing things like box jumps and long jumps and like more explosive type training as opposed to like hypertrophy training like yeah. a bodybuilder would do. So definitely don't get on like a bodybuilding program. Um, you should definitely seek a program that is geared towards athletes and built for athletes and maybe written also by an athletic coach yes. instead of a bodybuilder. So I would do exactly what you said, um, but you still need to do similar exercises, but you need to do the exercises differently. differently yeah. So for example, for a squat, what you're going to see a lot of times with um, bodybuilder style or not just bodybuilder, but people looking to build muscle yeah. is, you know, it's a slow eccentric and then it's, they come up again um, with the concentric. So they're not really thinking explosion up. They're just kind of thinking tension in the muscle. Mm -hmm. So with athletic it's style training, yeah. it's more like you said, plyometrics, um, but it's also coming down and up. So it's more about speed and power. So generating as much power as you possibly can. Yeah. Um, the so main difference is going to be your tempos during your lifts and probably also a big difference in the loads, meaning you're going to use lighter weights, less weight, a lot of times no weight. Somewhat, somewhat. Yeah, depending on, you know, your what's, in the training program, but I would say don't just make things up as you go and do a little of this and a little of that. Like get on a specific program yeah. that's designed to increase your vertical. Like there are a lot of great programs out there that have been written by coaches and tested on athletes. Yeah, like um, if you guys watched <clears throat> way back over on our BGTV channel, Brad Guthrie TV, um, I was training for to improve my vertical. Yeah. So I re you found a book at the library, right? No, like, yeah, I I went to like one of the best of the best trainers. It was yeah. Tim Grover who trained Michael Jordan, trained Dwayne Wade. So I'm like, okay, obviously this guy knows what he's doing. So I bought his book, did the workout program that was in the book. So um, it's it's basically like if you want to get on a good program, go to somebody who is really specific in that area, and that's what I did. So that's I would say advice, yeah. I would say don't try it yourself. Like get right. on a freaking program. <laughs> like, does that not sound like so familiar? And like, we're not even saying go buy our program because we don't ours, yeah. we don't have an athletic style pro. I really, really Actually, want to come out to with one. one right? yeah. So I guess that's the first question to you guys out there is question of the day is if I came out with an athletic style workout program, would you guys want that? So yeah. you can start the conversations going down below. I would love to know how many of our viewers want athletic performance, just as opposed to like, because what we focus on mainly with our programs is like fat loss, body recomposition, which I feel like is what most people want. Like if you're not an athlete and you're yeah. just a normal person living everyday life, you just want to look good naked, right? 
But sometimes when you already look good naked, then you want to train athletically. Yeah, but what if you want to perform better naked? Oh, that's a good program <laughs> title. <laughs> so I just think, like, guys, like, I just think, like, you can get bored with the same style training over and over again. Like, I love athletic style training because it's outside of what t people typically do. Like, in, you know, so you don't have to be, like, professional athlete to train athletically. I think if you train athletically, it can be very fun and very entertaining for people, which will keep you going. So, Plus, athletic training just happens to be a great way to improve your body composition, does, too. Because if you time. look at athletes, They're they all shredded. have great body composition, super <laughs> low fat, very high muscle. So just it's kind of like you achieve that goal of fat loss and, and um, lean muscle by training athletically. Yeah. It's like a byproduct of it. So instead of training to get lean and muscular, train to get athletic and you accidentally get lean and muscular, you yeah. know? Not accidentally, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Okay, so um, Gayesha Art says, I have a question. I have not been consistent in the Live Lean formula for women because I started to feel lethargic, dizzy, and tired for a month. I do feel a lot better now. I lost two pounds. I'm 5'1 one and 110 and liked that. Now, I liked that weight. Now I'm 108 now. My question is that, I was two weeks into phase two when this happened. Should I start over or continue where I left off? Yeah, that's a good question. We get that question quite a bit. So <clears throat> to sum that up, if you're doing a workout program, then for some reason you have to stop the workout program halfway into it or one week into it, should you start the workout program over again? Yeah. So what, well, it's that's, your program. Well, that's one part program, of this question, so. but I'm also thinking, I'm wondering if you're asking me, like, why did you feel lethargic, dizzy, and tired? I don't know that this was related to the training. No, it I, probably was related to something so that's else. Just, I don't think that's what she's that's asking. That's not part that's of the That's just question. lifestyle related. Okay, so. but I do want you guys to know that a training program should not make you feel that way. And it's if you do kind of have that happen, it's probably not related to the training. Um, but... Now, yeah, should you start the program over? I would say no. I would say pick up and resume from where you left off. It, unless the time period was really long, but you said it's only two weeks, right? Has it been two weeks since you, yeah, you were two weeks into phase two when this happened, but I don't know how much time you took off. If you took off three months, then I would have you start yeah. over. But if you just took off two weeks or even four or six weeks, I would just have you resume where you left off. I would say when you have that question, what do you do? You start over. Yeah, the like more, if you're debating about it. It's, it, mm. it's like one of those things like when you're doing a set and it calls for 10 reps and yeah. you forget how many you have. Yeah, you're like, am I at eight Am or I 10? at eight or, or nine? Yeah. You're at eight. Yeah. If you're like... If you're supposed to do four sets and you forget where you're at, you're like, I am I on or two four? or three? Yeah. You're on two. <laughs> yeah, Go. <I> agree. <laughs> like that's the way, that's the mindset of more, 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 more. So mm, more is not always better. I kind well, of when we're talking, more is not always better. No, you're but right. Yes. In that kind of situation, I would say if you can't decide, should I start over or should I continue? And especially if you feel like you're not in the same shape that you were when you left off, then I would say go back yeah. and start over. But I would hate to have you start mm -hmm. over and go through everything again because um, I don't know if you guys know this, but with our programs, we don't recommend that you do the same program over and over and over again. Like you do a program once and then you move on to a different program, either one that's more advanced for yeah. the same goal or one that's for a different goal. Because if you keep doing the same program over and over and over again for weeks on end, you are going to plateau. You won't still get the same great results that you got the first time you did it. So that's why I kind of think more is not always better and I would hate to see you do a plateau. So I would say just finish the program from where you left it and then get on a fresh program after. That's why I married her because she's so smart. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question on Facebook from Corinne Demers. Hi, I'm 24 years old, measure five foot five, five foot six, weigh about 160 pounds, goal is 130. I'm currently about I'm currently doing about one hour circuit training style four to five times a week. I tracked what I was eating in a day and I was eating about 1,300 calories a day. Now that I calculated on my fitness pal, they recommend I eat 1,440 a day. Is this enough or should I increase my activity level to very active, which would bring me to about 1,750 calories a day? Or since I was used to eating 13 to 1,400 calories, is it good for weight loss? I'm feeling very good at 1,440 calories for now. I have been at the, that amount for two weeks and I'm noticing changes in my physique and well-being. Also, my macros are 90 carbs, 162 protein, 48 fats. Is that too high or good for my fat loss goal? Okay. Um, 
I, I like this question because it really addresses something that I think is really confusing to people. They're like, okay, I know I need a deficit for weight loss, but then when you really calculate your numbers and you figure out what your maintenance is, sometimes the deficit that you were in before is too extreme. Mm. And then you, you're kind of stuck. You're like, you don't know what to do because if you start eating more, you're afraid you're going to gain more weight. Here's the thing, guys. If you don't eat enough, your body will stall the fat loss. Like it seems... It seems like it's one of those things that's just like um, counterintuitive. You're like, wait, but the less you eat, the more weight you should lose, right? But that's not the case. Like your, your fat loss has a lot to do with your hormonal systems and the health of your metabolism. It's... And if your metabolism is slow and not healthy and not getting the nutrition it needs, it doesn't burn fat as effectively as it would had you been fully nourished. Yeah, it goes into survival mode. Like your exactly. body is not meant to get you as lean as you possibly can be. It's meant to survive. And, and by storing fat by, is a survival mechanism. Yes, yes. By having extra fat storage, it means that you can go in a famine and still survive for an extended period of time. Fat serves like, a biological purpose. It our, keeps you warm, it keeps you healthy, it keeps you safe. So like our yeah. bodies are like built way back and our bodies are still They're the same. Smart. Yeah, yeah. So um, but if you are in a slight caloric deficit and you're still getting all the nourishment you need and you're training like a beast, that's when fat loss can occur. So I do think like just alone from hearing what your height and weight is, 1300, 1400 calories is too low for you. And that's without even doing the calculations and the math. If I were to do the math, I could tell you exactly what level I would have you eating at as your coach. Um, but I'm just, I'm five, six also, and I weigh like, 125, almost 130 pounds. So my maintenance calories at my activity level are about 2,400. So that's like, we're talking, you know, almost twice as yeah, much as you were eating. But there's a difference here though. Your body composition is a lot different than yes, hers. Yes. So you have more muscle on your body. So mm -hmm. you require more calories. Right. She, you, so your lean body mass is higher than what hers exactly. is. Exactly. So yeah. like we're trying to feed your I'm, lean. I wouldn't put you on my uh, diet exactly. Yeah. So just to clarify what lean body mass is, that's like your body weight minus your body fat. So that's the, that's the amount that we mm. are feeding. Like you mm. don't want to feed your, like the, the fat yeah. that you have on your body. Yeah. So that's a little bit different. So um, her lean body mass is going to be lower. So her calories should but be lower. But she's also training pretty much just as much as I am. She says circuit training for an hour, four to five days a week. That is a pretty moderate to slash high intense um, yeah. or high frequency of training. So I do think you're too low uh, yeah. at where you but, are and you're asking that. But she did mention <laughs> at 1,440 calories when she bumped it up, she she's feels good. She's starting seeing better and results. she's seeing results. So exactly. So, like, I would put you up to 1,700. I think that's going to be fine for you. And yeah, you are going to see better results. I wouldn't I put you up that high this quickly though. Like, yeah, not quickly, but slowly, gradually. But honestly, the difference between 1,440 and 1,700 is really not that much. Well, it so is. So you could go to 16 maybe, try it out, and then go up to 17. Yeah. But, I don't know, maybe we'll have differing opinions on this, but I would be like, if you're doing that amount of calories, 1440, you're feeling energized, you're feeling like you're getting in good workouts, you're still seeing um, changes in your body, then like keep that. And then once things stall, then it's like, okay, let's add a little more calories to bump up the metabolism a little bit more, but exactly. slowly, exactly. not like don't bump it up 500 and just go from there. Like the reverse right. dieting video that Jessica had, like, right. you know, a few calories here and just keep going up. So right, it sounds exactly. like you're on the right path. I love the question. I love the details that you gave us. Yeah. Um, and you say, are my macros at 90 carbs, 162 protein, 48 fats? Is that too good? I think that's pretty good. Um, it's keeping yeah, protein up so me, you're yeah. maintaining muscle. It's keeping carbs a little bit lower, which is good for fat loss. So yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, I think you're going to get great results if you stay the course and as you start to stoke your metabolism and, you know, get raise your metabolic rate, you're going to see more fat loss and, mm -hmm. and feel better. So that's what it's all about. That's what Living Lean is about, you guys. We're not about dieting. You know, we don't like slash your guys' calories like crazy. And put you, you on want, the treadmill for 50 hours yeah. a week. If you want to change your body composition, it's by dialing your notch just a little bit this way or a little bit that way. I mean... I, we, you guys got to get over the idea of like bulking and cutting and like slashing calories and raising calories and going beast mode all the time because all you need is slight adjustments to see your body change. Okay, so Sophie said, shooting, star, shooting Stars 21 says, I recently got a Fitbit and I'm confused about the heart rate zones. How long should I spend in each or does it matter? 
All right, so. Does it even matter? <laughs> so heart rate zones. Um, so to calculate your heart rate zone, if you guys mm -hmm. aren't aware, so you take 220 minus your age, okay? So that's, let's just say you're 20 years old. So 220 minus your age, 20, that's is 200. Max. No, that's like, that's kind of crazy. Like you, yeah, don't, you don't want to be crazy. at that. No, <laughs> so, but I'm saying that's what your maximum is. Like yeah, you don't want to train at your maximum. So if, yeah. we're, if we are putting you into like a HIT training zone, if we're putting on a HIT training program, you'd want to go 85 to 90% of 200 at your high level. So when you're doing your high intensity interval, you want your heart rate to be up mm. there. And then after your interval is done, you want your heart rate to come back down again. And you want it to come down between like 60 and 65%. So those two numbers, for HIIT training is where you want to be. Now, if you're doing the more like slow and steady cardio pace and you want to stay in the quote unquote fat burning zone, you know, there's a time and place for it. But <laughs> so if you want to stay in that fat burning zone, that typically is right around the 65%. So 220 minus your age, 20, multiply 200 by 0.65, and then you would stay at that zone for, you know, 30 to 45 to 60 minutes, yeah. So, um, That's my opinion. or if you're doing HIT, you would do that, that high intensity zone for a much shorter period. And is, was that the question That's how long? She just wants to know, you know, so yeah, how, how long, long should I spend in each yeah, so, zone or does it even matter? So that depends on your fitness level. Like if you're really, and it depends on how all out you're going. So if you're really athletic, I would have you go at a shorter intensity, but much faster. Like you know what all out means. Um, but typically it's, it could be a one-to-one. -one, so 60 seconds of, of high intensity, 60 seconds of low intensity. For some people that's too much. You'd go 30 seconds of high intensity, 60 seconds of low intensity. So it's like a one to two. One to two, yeah, something like it that. It really, it really, you know what? It's not how long you should spend in it. It's when your heart rate actually comes back down again. That's more important. So if two minutes and your heart rate is still up there, it's not enough time for you to recover. So you gotta hang out, you gotta rest longer. So. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Fitbits and all these kind of like digital things and monitor your heart rates and everything are okay as like motivators and everything but i wouldn't get too hung up or too obsessed on those numbers like you can tell when you're training you know how long you can go during a high intensity interval before you lose that intensity yeah. you know when your form starts to get sloppy and you just can't keep up anymore that's when you know you should switch to a rest period so you can pay attention to these numbers on your fitbit but you don't have to in order to get fit it's not like a requirement to stay in a certain zone so I would say, does it matter is like kind of yes, kind of no. Um, it matters, but not to the point where you have to pay attention so diligently in and, order to get results. And if you don't have access to a heart rate monitor, you can just do it based on your breathing. Yeah. So when you're in a high you intensity zone, you shouldn't be able to have a conversation with yeah. the person on the treadmill next to you. Exactly. When you are low enough and you're in that low intensity zone and you can carry a conversation without breathing like this, then you know you're ready to get back into your right. high intensity zone right. again. So that's another exactly. way you can do it. I would love for you to watch some of our YouTube videos of our cardio workouts and then you can kind of see what our workout setup is like and we have a lot of ones that are 30 30s or 40 20s or 2010 like the tabata ones yeah um, so you can see kind of how long we stay at a high heart rate and how long we give ourselves to rest yeah. next question on facebook from terry cunningham says hey guys here's my story i lift weights four days a week do cardio six days a week eat a clean diet carbs from fruits and veggies high protein and good fats i want to lower my body fat percentage i do a cheat meal every friday usually at arby's sandwich or a dilly bar from dairy queen so do i need to give up my cheat meal to do this wait so she wants to do a cheat meal once a week and wondering if you need to give it up yeah no girl we do cheat meals and they serve the purpose of helping you lose fat they don't hinder your fat loss yeah. like the purpose of a cheat meal is for sustained fat loss it's not just only for people who are already lean. Yeah, Terry, I would say if you're doing, if you are doing what you say you're doing, my first question would be, how long have you been doing that for? Because you are bang on with what you're doing. So my answer to your question would be, yes, keep doing what you say you're doing, <laughs> have the cheat meal, and just continue it. Have patience, because it's gonna take time, but if you consistently do what you say you're doing, it's gonna happen. 
You know, my other question for you would be, are you dialing in your macros? Like you say, you're eating clean sources of carbs yeah, that's good and point. clean, healthy foods and whatever, fruits and vegetables, yada, yada. But at the end of the day, if you're in a caloric surplus, you're going to have a layer of fat. So I would say really, you know, pay attention to your nutritional portion sizes and make sure that your normal daily diet is on point for your fat loss goal. Like figure out how much of a fat loss goal you have, and then you can work it back, kind of re reverse engineer it and figure out how much of a deficit you need to be in every day to reach your goal. And then that cheat meal, just so you guys all know, a cheat meal is not on top of your calories. It replaces some of your calories. So like say on Saturday night, instead of having your normal snack and dinner, you're going to just forget those and go have a cheat meal instead. So you're not really in a caloric surplus when you're having cheat meals. You're just eating a less healthy type of food in replacement for your normal healthy meal. Yeah, and and Terry, if I had to like critique something there, I think you're probably <laughs> overdoing the cardio. it on cardio. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I'm like, you do, you do your weightlifting four days a week plus cardio yeah. six days a week. I so would, that sounds like a lot of days are two a days. You gotta remember recovery is important, yeah. especially for fat loss, because like if your body is in that stress zone all the time, the right. cortisol, which is the stress hormones going through your body, and that holds on to the fat, especially like around the belly. So mm -hmm. um, it, you may want to cut back on the cardio, you know, four days of lifting, two days of cardio. Yeah. And you know, the other thing I would say is instead of just doing lifting and cardio, like follow a program that's specifically designed for fat loss, you'll still be doing lifting and cardio, but it'll be more specific types and different types. Cause you say you've been doing this for a while now, you may be just used to it and kind of stuck at a plateau. So really shake things up with your body. I would say really focus on dialing in your, your nutrition and you will be able to get rid of that fat absolutely without giving up cheat meals. Still use cheat meals, definitely. Okay, Ephemera says, Hi Brad and Jess, love the show. I'm having six to seven workouts a week, two of weight training, two of hit, and two of mix of cardio strength and flexibility. I normally don't find them too strenuous and normally one of the weekdays I have a weight training in the morning and either one or the others in the evening and it goes well sometimes I end up too sore the next day but all right. A few days ago I did two workouts again but only the next day I woke up with not only muscle sore but also a massive headache and literally feeling like the flu or just very sick, not even hungry, even had to stay in bed for the most part of that following day, which is very sporadic to me. I have to feel really sick for that, so you can imagine. Did I exaggerate it? Is this even normal? I try to maintain a good diet according, but not sure if those days I should do something very special with it. Thank you. Yeah. So, I mean, it, this is so, like similar to that past question about formula for women. It's like feeling bad after doing some workouts. I don't think it's related. No, well, no, it could be. Like, she sounds like she's going a lot more beast mode than formula for women. I don't know, but. Well, it sounds like well, she's doing two a days. Formula for women has weight training, hit, and cardio in it. Yeah, but too, didn't she so. mention two a days she was doing? No, no, no. It's six to seven workouts a week. It's like two, two, and two. Yeah, but. But that's eight. <laughs> Yeah, like so it... No, two, two, and two is six. Yeah, so there's a seventh one in there sometimes, I guess, so... It's one of those things, like, it's kind of like, if I feel like I'm sick, should I go to the gym? I mean, that's going to have to be something that you guys answer. We can't tell you that. If you have, like, a stuffy nose, and it's just, like, in the beginning stages, you know, to be nice to the other people at the gym who probably don't want your sticky hands over the dumbbell, probably stay home. But for some of us who are just, like, want to get it in... Stuffy nose is not going to stop me from going to the gym. But if I'm laid up in bed or if I have a headache, like I think there's certain signs that your body's telling you don't stress me out. Like that's one of the things is like when you go to the gym, you are stressing your body out and that's actually affecting your immune system because if your immune system's not that strong, you're knocking it down even further by having yes. a tough workout. That's so, what I think could be the case here. And especially if this was your first week of living lean and yeah. you're like i'm gonna get it yeah. and i'm gonna do Crush seven it. workouts and your body's completely not used to that like you haven't worked out in a decade and this is like your first go at yeah. it i think that's what could have been the problem there is your immune system was just already kind of knocked down and then putting all that stress on your body all at once could have made it worse but i don't know i mean you know you you said you maintain a good diet um, I was going to say your nutrition could have been off a little bit, which could have further reduced your immune system, but that may not be the case. You know, I don't know. We'd have to kind of know more details about your previous history and how accustomed you are to working out and stuff. But yeah, he did say that is, I don't know if this is a he or she, but 
you said you did two workouts in one day. So I would say dial that back down a little bit. You guys should know that you don't have to work that hard, you know, especially if you're new to training. I might have like an advanced athlete doing two a days, but for most common people yeah. who are just starting their live lean journey, two a days is, is a little too extreme. Unless we're talking like a walk. Yeah. That's true. Or like a yoga class plus a weight session or something like that. But still, I that wouldn't want to, I wouldn't have you doing like hit and strength training and if you're still like a beginner. All one day. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next question on YouTube from Kendall Koch says, hi guys, I'm 25 years old, female, 5'9", 140. I'm almost where I want to be with body composition, but I want to lose a little more fat in the stomach area. I recently saw a nutritionist to help me with some digestive issues. She suggested that I eat gluten and dairy-free based off my blood worm, resu blood worm results. <laughs> Probably work. <laughs> <laughs> so, showing a sensitivity to both gluten and dairy. She has given me now sports egg white protein powder to continue adding protein to my diet, but it doesn't have a good taste. So... It can really only be added to a fruit smoothie. It's been a big change in my life and I'm finding it difficult to stay on track with my macros, especially the protein part without going over in carbs and fat. My question is most focused on your Live Lean cookbook. Do you offer many gluten and dairy-free recipes or do you have any suggestions other than the obvious swaps for making recipes to easier to follow with my new needs? If I continue working out regularly, can my body adapt to less protein with slightly higher carbs and fats and still stay in maintenance? Okay, good question. Um, so all of our recipes in our cookbooks, almost all of them, are dairy and gluten-free because that's how we Every grow. recipe in yeah. Clean Live Lean, like the Live Lean cookbook that you asked about, is that's, that's, the, no dairy that's the premise of the cookbook yeah. is that there's no dairy, no soy, no right. wheat, no grains. Yeah, I do have some like grains in the Fearless Foodie cookbook, like you'll see buckwheat and oats and stuff like that, but definitely no like processed grains. Um, and you could absolutely, you know, make it gluten free by excluding those items or replacing them with a different kind of flour or something. But um, yeah, I definitely think that you're going to find like all of the recipes that we share in our Team of Lean group and stuff. There's so many good ideas for you for people who are dairy and gluten free because that's. <laughs> it's just what we do, you know? It's what works good for us, it's, too. I'm not surprised that your doctor's recommending this because it's a yeah, really healthy way to eat. So. And I just want to say, good on you for actually going to see nutritionists. Like, yeah. you figured out that there was an issue with your digestive or whatever it may have been. You went to go see a professional. Now you got some feedback. Got some solutions. Yeah. That's what we need a lot of you guys to be doing. Like, yeah. as opposed to being like, oh, I got thyroid problems, but have you talked to somebody to see if you actually do? Uh -uh. Or are you just dogging it on your workouts and your diet? Um, do you have this problem? Like, you know, go to see somebody to get real facts. Mm -hmm. um, so now you, you're in execution mode. And I think you're doing the right thing by the Eat Clean Live Lean cookbook is what you need. Or the Live Lean 20. The Live Lean 20 a, yeah. cookbook is There's only 20 the ingredients same. and none of them are dairy or grain. TeamLiveLean.com yeah. has over 200 recipes in there as long, along with workouts and, and everything. And video recipes so you actually yeah. see us in the kitchen making the food so it really simplifies it for you. So Step-by-step -step instructions. So based on your needs, like yeah. our recipes and stuff are bang on. Yeah, like, absolutely. And your needs are what the majority of the population needs should be. <laughs> <laughs> even though they don't know it. Yet. Yeah, even though they don't know it yet. <laughs> yeah. So uh, once you come and join us, you do one of our programs, make sure you spread that stuff around because... And, and as far as like hitting your macro goals and stuff and getting your protein where it needs to be without the carbs and stuff going up too much, we make... Um, fruit smoothies to put our protein in almost on a daily basis. As long as you have the fruit portions reasonable and then you have more protein in the rest of your meals, that should not ruin your macros for the day. And you did mention that you don't like the taste of your egg protein. Um, I would have you switch over to the protein that I take because I take an egg protein yeah. and it's from a company called Roots Nutrition. And it's that all actually tastes fine. It's all paleo based. With water, wouldn't it? Like yeah, it's or it's almond milk. It's a banana yeah. nut flavor. Like mm -hmm. it tastes really good. Like, it has a good flavor to it. And yeah. So if you guys haven't known, you can known, bake with it too. So if you guys don't know, like I switched from whey protein over to egg protein, and um, so it's really good. We have a ten percent discount code if you want to use it, um, and I'll, we'll put the link down below in, in the video description. And the uh, coupon code is Live Lean TV, all one word. So I do recommend that supplement. Mm -hmm. Next question from Twitter from Dahlia Milana Vela says, Hey guys, I was wondering, does the nutritional value of vegetables change if you eat them raw, broiled, boiled, or steamed? Mm. Raw, broiled, boiled, steamed. It sounds like a hip hop rap song. Right? <laughs> 
Um, so I would say maybe, but not significantly enough to the point where you need to only stick with one way. Like, you know, raw may contain more nutrients because less of the nutrients are, I don't know, killed when, when they're cooked. Yeah. But then again, sometimes when vegetables are cooked, it helps release certain nutrients. So I would think a good mix of both raw and cooked vegetables in your diet is the best way to go. I wouldn't have you having everything raw and I definitely wouldn't want you to eat everything cooked. So I like a little bit of each. Yeah, just not fried. Like fast, yeah. <laughs> like fried. Like, but uh, like stir fried is okay. Stir, no, I, like I know. We deep do fried pan is, fried. Deep fried yeah, is not deep say. fried, exactly. Well, maybe every once in a while. If you really like that, you could have it as a cheat meal and deep stuff. Deep fried Brussels sprouts? Yeah, oh, right? That'd be actually a So good. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, you're right. So <laughs> Don't uh, think black and white. Just have like a little. I, I think time. that the healthiest way that you can eat vegetables would be a combination of raw and steamed. So yeah. th that would be the best way to do it. Um, but so not even sauteed with oil ever? Actually, you know what? Sauteed with oil is good because it helps you absorb the nutrients exactly. of the vegetables because a lot of the, the... And plus it makes them taste better. A lot of the vitamins in vegetables are fat soluble. So you yeah. need to have a fat with them to actually absorb them That's into your body. So. And when we eat raw veggies, we usually have some salad dressing on it yeah. too, which is like some olive oil or something. Yeah. So um, yeah, I like, I use steamed vegetables a lot, like just steamed with water when I'm like getting ready for a competition or trying to, um, you know, stay underneath a calorie cap or something like that. So I definitely like, I've learned to like steamed vegetables a lot with no sauce or nothing on them. It's kind of an acquired taste. You have to get used to the sort of plainness of it. But honestly, guys, when you start eating cleaner foods and like using less sauces and stuff, your taste buds do develop to actually taste the flavors more. So something like steamed carrots can actually taste very, very sweet to you if you um, aren't eating a lot of like junk food or fried food and stuff. So your taste buds will change over time when you change your diet. So if, oops, if you don't like steamed or raw vegetables, you can learn to. <laughs> okay, Leonardo F says, just watched a video about foods that make you hungrier. What are the alternatives for bread that are easy to prepare? Ah, yes. The common foods that make you hungrier. Yeah. <laughs> um, so for bread, like, so we have, we have a lot of uh, substitutions for like pasta, mm -hmm. for or grains, for like grains, rice, or... for rice, mm -hmm. like call it, like, you know, I actually did a video. You should go watch the video. It's called, uh, I think it's 14 food swaps mm. or something where we show you a lot of that stuff. But bread in particular, there's really, in my opinion, there's no good substitute that's easy to prepare and that's very like similar in and that taste has the same texture. and texture. The texture and is big because so, bread texture is irreplaceable. So like what I said in that video, the common foods that make you hungry, right? It was maybe in that video or another video is just if you can't get bread out of your diet, try to just cut back on a little bit and just make better choices when you're buying bread. So for instance, like. Whole grain bread a lot, in a lot of ways, if you look at the ingredients, it's just like, especially when I described it in some of these videos, it's just not good. It's not what the way grandma's bread used to be. Like the nutrients are depleted and they use coloring to make it look like it's whole wheat in a lot of times. Um, so what I would have you do is just choose a better quality bread, like Ezekiel bread, we have it at times. Um, sourdough bread, like I mentioned in, in, I think in that video, is a better type of grain yeah, to have. Yeah, we've been liking that recently. If you just get it, it's basically just um, pure ingredients. You know, there's no preservatives in it, so it does go bad faster. You have to keep it in the fridge. You can't just let it sit on the yep. counter. Um, and it's yeah. gonna cost you more money. But exactly. guess what? If you wanna eat bread, you gotta pay it a piper. <laughs> Seriously. Don't have and the wonder bread that lasts for yeah. six, six months in your cabinet. And like, it's going to get fresh bread that and, will go bad. And it's going to make you not want to eat it as often because it's more expensive. So it's one of those things, guys. When you got money in the game, it's going to change you in a lot of ways. But you know what I think is another one for bread? Like we've used this in a couple of our cookbooks is if you made like sweet potato toast, like yeah. the like we had on those But that's um, burgers, different. Like that's not... I know it's it's a totally different experience than bread, but it still it's works as a bun. Like you take really thin yeah. slices of sweet potato and you put two pieces like on either side of a burger and then you can pick it up with your hands and eat yeah. it. It's, you could also make avocado toast with it. You can make peanut butter and jelly with it. Yeah. Like those sweet potato slices, they, I feel like, are a good and easy alternative to bread because it's so easy. You slice it thin, you're right. you stick it in your toaster or use your oven and then it takes about like three or four toaster cycles. It's not just like one cycle. But, 
your bread would you're be. You're hundred percent right. Like that just nailed all the criteria. Like it's easy. Yes. And it's a better alternative. But just don't go into it thinking, oh, this is gonna taste like bread. It's gonna right. taste like sweet potato. But sweet right. potato is freaking delicious. So yeah. it's it's good. It's like. So. And then the other one that comes to mind for me is the lettuce, the romaine lettuce yeah, cups. That's... I know it doesn't replace bread, but you could make a sandwich using a piece of romaine lettuce. Stack up your chicken, tomato, whatever you want, and then put some mustard on it, and then put another piece of lettuce in sandwich. It's good. Like it's not a bread. It's sandwich, not a bread but sandwich, yeah. but it's good. Yeah. And then also the collard burritos is like yes. I feel like that's boom, a good boom, substitute. Boom. I know I have so many of them I could go on all day. But the, the key is is get creative with your ideas and. If, if you're missing burgers, figure out how you can make burger buns. If you're missing um, wraps, figure out how to make different kind of wraps. Um, you don't have to have bread, but you can if you really want to. Yeah. You could fit it into your macros. That's it. That was another well, that show. Did. That was 10 questions. Good show, babe. Good yeah. job. Yeah, you good. stepped it up there at the end. Did I? Yeah. Oh, coming out with all these bread ideas <laughs> for you. <laughs> I'm like the bread alternative lady. <laughs> all right. So question. I still like bread though, you guys. I do. So question of the day. We did, we did fire you one of the questions, um, like an athletic style training program. Mm -hmm. Would you guys be interested in that? You can put that comment down below. Yes or no. Yeah. Um, but we give us another one. And do you want to perform better naked? <laughs> Should that be a program? Obby. Oh, a program? <laughs> yeah, should that be a program? Is that like a DVD follow-along program? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I just embarrass you, babe? <laughs> you know what? I think, okay, here's a good question of the day All for right, you guys. Here we go. What is the number one like type of program you'd like to see from us in the future? Because you guys know we already have things in the works. Our little cogs are turning. Like We already have programs that we're working on that will, will come out soon that you'll see, but we're always creating new ones. And, so I would love to know from you guys, like what do you want to see? And be specific. Like, yeah. it, like don't just say like a home workout program. Right, like, what kind of home What equipment program? do yeah. you have access to? A yes. medicine ball, a Swiss ball, a kettlebell, right. a TRX. Like mm -hmm. be in the comments, be I want a workout program that I can do a, here, and here's the equipment that I have to do it. If it's just body weight, tell us just body weight. If you have pieces of equipment at home, put that in. If you train in the gym, a conventional gym, tell us. Tell us if you want it muscle building, you want it strength building, you want it fat loss, you want it athletic. We have a lot of great programs already, already but we definitely want to make sure that we have everything that you guys need yeah. and want. So we're working hard to create those programs. You just tell us what to do and we'll do it. Put it down below, people. We want to hear from you. Thank you guys for watching. And creep. <laughs> Literally. Literally. How do you even say creep? You, you got to take deep. Like creep. Creep. Literally. You do something with the lip. Boy. <laughs>